Hi everyone, today in Integrated Math 1, we're going to go over Chapter 3, Lesson 4. Here are the objectives. Make sure you write them down in your notes. Alright, so let's go for direct variation graphs. So direct variation equations are in the form of y is equal to kx. And this is where it's important. k cannot equal 0. And the graph y equals kx always passes through the origin, which is, remember, origin is at 0, 0. And you'll see that it happens on both of these, with a positive graph and a negative graph as well. So here's an example when the slope is positive if k is greater than 0. I'm going to show it like this. And notice it passes through 0, 0. If the slope is negative, k will be less than 0. But notice it also crosses at 0, 0. Let's try example 4. Suppose y varies directly as x and y is equal to negative 24 and x equals 8. And we want to write a direct variation equation that relates x and y. So first of all, let's go ahead and write our formula. It says that we will we know we're going to be using direct variation. So y is equal to kx. And this is our direct variation equation. Okay. And you can notice this right away of why you need to use this equation because it says it varies directly. That's your key word. Varies directly. And then it says y is equal to negative 24. So you're going to plug in y for negative 24 is equal to k. We don't know what k is. That's actually what we're trying to find out. So we're going to have it as k. And we know x is equal to 8. So 8 gets plugged in as 8. Now we want to solve for k. I'm going to box it. We need to get k by itself, so that means we need to divide by 8 to both sides. k is equal to negative 3. But we're not done. We just found out what k is. Now we need to plug it back into our original equation. So y is equal to kx because it wants a direct variation equation y is equal to k is negative 3. We're just going to leave it as x. Now this is your direct variation equation that relates x and y. Alright, so now let's try this next one. We want to suppose y varies directly as x, which means we're going to be using the direct variation equation. And this time we want to find out when y is equal to negative 18. We use our formula, the equation that we just solved. So y is equal to negative 3x. Because it says that we want to suppose that y varies directly as x and y is equal to negative 24 when x is equal to 8. Well, this is our new equation that we need to use. But this time, they now tell us that we're going to have a direct variation equation to find x when y is equal to negative 18. So we're going to plug in our information. y is negative 18 is equal to negative 3x. Solve for x. So I'm going to box it. Negative 3. So x is equal to 6. So therefore, we know that x is equal to 6 when y is equal to negative 18, but only during that time. And that's it.